Hi, in this tutorial I want to show you how to make a parallax effect that looks a little something like this. It's a very simple effect, so let's just get right into it. So here's a little background I made in Photoshop. The most important thing here when you make your background is that you put each of the different parts of the background on different layers. So as you can tell, I have a separate layer for each part of my background. The other important thing is that your background should end and start at almost exactly the same height. If it doesn't, it's going to look a bit weird, so just make sure that this is in place. If you want to download this background and follow along this tutorial or do whatever you want to with the background, I don't really care, you can go ahead and join my Discord and then go to the tutorial section and you can download the background and also the script for this tutorial. Also, if you want to give the background a bit more depth, you can go ahead and add blur to the different parts of the background. So you'll have a little something like this which makes it look a bit better and uh, more focused on the foreground, I guess. But now that we have our background, let's jump into Unity. Okay, so I have my empty project here in Unity and the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and make a new folder, call it background, and in this background folder I am going to drop in all of my background parts. Once they're done importing, what you wanna do is go to your main camera, add a new empty object and call it background. The reason we're doing this is because we want to move the background relative to the camera. Okay, so once you've made your background game object, you want to go ahead and drag every single one of your background parts onto the background game object. You can't really drag them all at the same time because it's going to try and make an animation, which is not what we want. And you can tell things don't really look like they're in order, and that's because we have to sort the layers. So in the order, we are going to set our uh, zero, which is the part we want in front, we're going to put that at 5 and then the part which we want behind that again, we're going to put on 4 and then 3, 2 and 1, which will put everything in the right order. Okay, so now that this is done, we have to extend the background because currently we can't really move it without it going outside of the screen. Um, which is a problem, so we're going to select all of our background parts, hit Ctrl D twice, and then we're going to extend them um, to the right and also to the left. So you want to try and match it like this, but I know that uh, my size is 20, so I can just put that in. And I made these backgrounds in 2000 by 1000 pixels, so if your background is in that size too, then this should work for you. So I'm going to do plus 20 and minus 20, and we now have our extended background. So if you go ahead and move our background all together, we can see it's much longer and we have some more room uh, for actually uh, implementing the parallax effect. So let's get right to it. I'm going to go back to my asset folder, create a new C sharp script, and we're going to call it parallax and go ahead and open it up. Okay, I've got my new C Sharp script here and what I'm gonna do is make some variables first. So we're gonna need to know the length and the start position of our sprite. We're also going to need the camera. And finally, we're going to need a public float that will tell us how much parallax effect we're gonna apply. So let's do something like that. And basically this variable we're going to be able to set in our editor so we can select how much parallax effect we want to apply. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to find the start position and the length. Start position should be relatively easy, simple as that, but for the length we need to get the sprite renderer and then find the length from there. So we're going to do length equals get component and we're going to get the sprite renderer. We're going to do bounce.size.x, which will give us the size in x, or the length of the sprites. Now we need to make the background actually move, so we're going to go into our updates. Let's just make it a fixed update, and we are going to make a temporary value called distance, which is how far we have moved from our start point. So let's do float distance equals cam.transform.position.x times the parallax effect and this will be how far we have moved in world space then we're going to need to actually move the camera so let's do transform the position uh, equals new vector 3 and we're going to do start pause plus 
the distance, which is how far we've traveled, and we're going to do transform.position.y, transform.position.c. And now, if we go into Unity, oh, and we also need to move these to their corresponding layers. So, 0 goes to 0, 1 goes to 1, and you get the idea. Okay, so with that done, we're going to go ahead and apply the parallax effects to all of them and drag the camera onto the cam. And now we can go ahead and set the parallax effect. So for the part all the way in the front, we're going to have a parallax effect of zero, which means it's going to move as if we're moving the camera past uh, the foreground. The second part is going to have a bit more parallax effect. So maybe one, uh, 0 0.3, then we can do 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. And then for the final background, which is just basically white and a bit yellow, we're going to put one, which means it's going to follow the camera and look as if it stands completely still. So if we try and play this now, it's going to look a little something like this. So we move the camera and you can tell that it looks really good and the different parts are moving at different speeds. But if we move outside of bounds, you're going to see uh, the background stops because we haven't made it so the background repeats itself yet. So we need to go back into C sharp and fix this. Luckily for us, this is a pretty simple fix. So let's do float temp. Uh, this is going to be how far we've moved relative to the camera. So let's do cam.transform.position.x times one minus the parallax effect. The reason we need one minus parallax effect is because, again, it's relative to the camera. Now all we need to do is make a simple if statement. So if temp is larger than the start pause plus the length, we're going to do start pause plus equals length. Else if temp is less than start pause minus length, we're going to do start pause minus equals length. And that concludes the script. If you go back into Unity now and we try and play and we go ahead and move our camera, you're going to see that the background will keep repeating itself no matter how far you move. So if we go ahead and look in the editor window, you can see that when we reach the end, it's going to repeat itself uh, and it just continues repeating infinitely. So. That concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys found this helpful. You can make some really cool effects with this. Uh, and if you did find it helpful, make sure to hit the like button. Possibly subscribe if you're feeling funky. And I will hopefully see you guys in the next video.